having covered the first three, you know, Dead Zone, the world's strongest tree of might, the next movie that comes up is Lord Slug. Now, for those who haven't seen the movie or don't remember, quick synopsis. Uh, there's a meteorite on its way to Earth. Boma calls up Goku um, because it's if it hits the Earth, it'll immediately wipe out the Earth. People start panicking in the streets. Goku and Krillin show up and they're trying to divert it because they it can they can uh, recognize that there's life on that meteorite and they don't want to kill everybody there. So they try to blast it. It doesn't work for reasons that don't quite make sense. Um, only to find out that the meteorite was housing Lord Slug's spaceship. Lord Slug now has an entire uh, troop and um, henchmen that are all demons from a demon clan that's, again, never specified. They come to Earth. They start to terraform it because apparently they cannot stand direct sunlight. So they start terraforming the Earth. Earth gets this massive cloud over it. Things turn to ice. Goku recovers, joins the fight with Gohan and Piccolo. It's very, very short in terms of the actual fights. Like Goku and Slug start fighting maybe within 10 minutes of him showing up. And uh, yeah, we get introduced to um, an interesting version of Super Saiyan that uh, fans over the years have coined as false Super Saiyan. Um, and, uh, you know, Slug is revealed to to be an Amekian, which was obvious from the first time you looked at him for more than two seconds. Uh, but it's made as like this great reveal within the movie. He's a super Namekian who's pure evil, even quote unquote worse than King Piccolo. And they're able to defeat him with a combination of Gohan's whistling. <laughs> Piccolo giving his key to Goku. Goku hitting Lord Slug with the attack he used to kill King Piccolo. And then nuking him with a spirit bomb from the heavens. Roll credits. Now, I've been waiting for us to talk about this movie because this is one of those movies where I feel like Lord Slug as a character is one of the first examples we get in the Dragon Ball franchise of the concept was better than the execution, where the idea of an evil Namekian, the idea of a super Namek, the idea of a uh, you know, what would happen essentially, you know, we got the last movie, what would happen if Goku was evil? What would happen if, you know, Demon King Piccolo got all the powers in the world, right? Essentially. Um, and I feel like having seen this movie, even when I was a kid, it just always felt like this is the worst Dragon Ball movie. Like, I know people will say like, oh, Bio Broly is so bad. I'm like, yeah, Bio Broly is not great as a character. But as a movie, it you know, it has its moments. It has its moments is what I'll say. Lord Slug, I'm like, I don't remember a redeemable part of this movie. There was nothing in this movie other than maybe the henchmen that I actively enjoyed. One of the I hated henchmen everything. We One of the henchmen get to enjoy, kid. Yeah. <laughs> this guy right here. <laughs> Why is Zarbon's he on the cover? cousin? <laughs> Why is he even oh, on no, the cover? No, 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 no. Got, that, that, that got that body. Got yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Say, I said, what is, why is he, why is he on the cover? He never made it off the ship, bro. Crazy, crazy. So I feel like, again, I, I think slug is saved because it's a good concept in theory. Um, I definitely want to save some of my thoughts about his character when we get into it, but I, I do to me, this is easily the worst Dragon Ball Z movie out of the original. I don't think anything <laughs> even comes close to how bad Lord slug is, but what did you guys think? Oh, um, you want to go first, Joey? Or I? No, you good. You good. You good. You good. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to talk about the placement, which was very, very odd. So apparently, this takes place after Goku's arrival on Namek, but before his final showdown with Frieza. And that's some of the thing I always feel like that was very weird about these movies. It's kind of like you play. Oh yeah, you cover this point, but oh no, no, no. But that part didn't happen yet. But how can this person leave? from this point to go back to this. But then that's why you just got to consider these movies as what if, what if when you really look at it. Um, the, the idea of a super Namek to me, it's cool, but it kind of felt flat, especially when you fast forward to the future. And to be honest, like, you know, especially as, you know, when I rewatched Dragon Ball and, you know, how we saw the King Piccolo saga, I was kind of expecting his henchmen to be something of that caliber. Because mm -hmm. you remember, he created all his henchmen, like mm -hmm. 
tambourine, drum, cymbal, uh, cymbal. Um, mm-hmm. So I would have thought that these henchmen would have been something like of him, like they are his offspring, and you know, and it, it would have made it would have made much more sense, bro. Because I kind of felt like this should have been a movie where. Piccolo's mindset is kind of like intrigued. I like, but no, it just it just falls flat. And like, and especially like you know, this was around the time of the Namek saga, and and the simple fact is like you know we started to get more lore about the Namek's. Like you know, there's two particular clans. There's the Dragon Clan who are like the Mystics, and then mm-hmm. there's the Warriors. But. It's kind of like there's no Namekian lore, but I just thought, oh, yes, I am a super Namek. But, like, bro, you didn't do anything but got big like Piccolo, and you just got. And died like King Piccolo. Yep. I have my thoughts on that, but we still talking about the plot for now. So, um, um... (laughs) And it's just like, I just kind of feel like, bro, that was just very dumb. And then the other fact about, because I get it, though, especially when you jump back to Daima, they saying that the the Namekians are a race that originated from the demon realm. Hmm? So they came from there and then I guess found another place and they settled on Namek and they've become what you call Namek's. That's cool because it, it makes sense because when you really look at it, look at King's Piccolo and Piccolo's fighting style for all their moves is like demon rush, demon this, demon that. Mm-hmm. So it kind of makes sense but it's just like the whole, oh, they, they can't touch the sunlight. I was like, bro, why is it got to always be with aliens? It's got to be some form of terraforming Type of like, like, bro, come on, like Dragon Ball Z, you don't really need to go there, bro. Right. But worse, and then right? my thing about it is, cool. this was just like, they went. And then my <laughs> thing about it is, what brought this Namekian to Earth so randomly? Because, like, even with Turles, like, like, you know, you know, due to what I discovered, oh, yeah, you got a call from Raditz or, you know, um, Nappa and Vegeta, and, you know, yeah, yeah, they went to Earth. I haven't heard from them in a while. Let me go check on that. But this is just, he just shows up. Just shows up, and that's it. And then, of course, like, you know, it's more dialogue with Goku than it is Piccolo. And it's like, bro, like, you have a connection to your own race, which you have an actual interest for. Because you, when you look at it, bro, you was born as an orphan. All your brothers were dead. Your daddy was dead. And, you know, due to where this take place, whatever, we don't even know if this was the part where Piccolo was wished alive. That was my assumption. My assumption was that this happens after he uh, fused with Nail. But like you said, they don't talk. So I don't know. I don't... There's Him and Piccolo and Sug talk for maybe 30 seconds in throughout the whole movie. Like, have an actual dialogue with each other. So it's... it's I have no earthly idea <laughs> where this takes place in terms of who's powered up. Other than, like you said, it's right before Goku fights Frieza. So that's why... The reason why I said that, like, if that's the case, then... Piccolo would have been brought back to life and would have fused with Nail, but we don't know because he's out for half the movie after shielding Gohan from a couple of key blasts. But go on, Tim. Bro, <laughs> and, and it's like, even the Super Saiyan transformation, bro, that was very hollow to me because like all he did was just crush his hand and like, bro, he's in the Mac and he's just going to grow that back. And then when he does grow it back, it shocks you out of being Super Saiyan. You're so caught off guard, you lose a transformation. And, and you know, and that's the part where I kind of feel like you know this was the first major sign. Like, oh yeah, you know, we're just gonna focus on Goku that went south. Yeah, yeah. I gave I gave this movie a three. It was boring. It was very forgettable. It was very very boring and forgettable. It really was. Yeah, this 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 movie felt like an episode of. You know, you know, when you wake up Saturday morning and it just so happens to be uh end of season finale close to the season finale, but not really quite close to the season finale for your WB cartoon programming. And they give that that terrible episode where it's just like nothing really happens, nothing really goes anywhere. Villain of the week. Mm-hmm. This felt like a villain of the week. Uh, so you're going to terraform Earth to turn it into a ship? What's wrong with the yeah. ship that you had before? I want a bigger ship. <laughs> and, 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 and it's like, uh, number one, when I saw how trash of a captain he was, I'm like, yo, why would anybody want to serve you, dog? Like, <laughs> uh, you, you said I'm old? <laughs> I said, I said, I said, wait, what? 
You you serious? <laughs> you minion one. How long will it take? What if I'm honest? Three days. <laughs> I'm like dog. We only this. We just got here. <laughs> ain't no way I could like you, dog. L.A. man. <laughs> I was just like, I said, okay, this don't, this is crazy, dog. So I'm watching him. He gets the Dragon Balls. Boma, who works at Capsule Court. I mean, well, she is technically the heir. She, she gets her mind, her mind read what because she blurts out, okay. Um, uh, you know, and, the, and then after that, but even before he even shows up, Piccolo and, and uh, Piccolo's listening to the music. And he goes through this Morpheus Morpheus psychosis dog. I'm just like dog you for real man So you mean to tell me A, a star blowing up Don't don't distort your ears But tambourines And, and a da- dragon dancing Alright man okay Especially a person where your whole Clan and brothers were named after Musical instruments and I'm just like Wait what like, bro, you have a brother named Tambourine. Yeah, yeah. You go. And so, and so, now we get to his henchmen. I like the designs. They were unique, right? They were unique. Yeah. Um, Some of them just, a little, they borrow a little heavily, right? Like, there's the yeah, one where I'm like, yeah. this is he clearly Zarbon like, and Dodoria. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly. But with horns and, and wings. <laughs> with horns and wings, man. And then, um, man, so now you finally get to you know, Lord Slug showing up. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie. That's probably the funniest part with Krillin. Krillin goes up. I'll take him on. Ah! Well, you got this one, Goku. That was beautiful. That was hilarious. Um, <laughs> okay. I'll give you that. That was hilarious. But nothing got nothing got. Um, I'll tell you when Cooler returns. Nothing got that one part with the. Uh, I'll tell you what part had me done to this day. It still has me rolling. Okay. When we get to it, but um. This movie was just he wishes to be young again versus wishing for a new ship. So what if you didn't find the Dragon Balls? What would have you have done? You would have terraformed the planet anyway and then just So what's your objective? Like, hey man, I'm young now, let me bang it. And I'm just blown away. I like not blown away, but I'm trying to understand this, yo, this movie ain't good, man. Keep going. So now Goku shows up. <laughs> Um, Goku, of course, beats everybody. No Tien, no Yamcha. Um, oh, remember, they're dead in this timeline. They're dead in this timeline, right? So Goku mm-hmm. went to Namek, beat the Ginyu Force, came back with Piccolo, <laughs> then went back and fought Frieza. And, and fought yeah. Frieza. Mm-hmm. You can't consider it that far because, bro, once you explain it out loud, it just sounds so crazy. Like, wait, what? Hey going <laughs> yeah so so i'm just like i'm like yo this is crazy you, you didn't think about bringing vegeta with you um so you, you know what I'm saying? it's just like yo this is insane mm-hmm. so so it took you all that time to get to namek and you come back in a jiffy okay uh let's keep going man so now we get to the fight. Uh, Goku fights the henchmen, which is what the henchmen were cool, right? Some of them were interesting. I like, I like Metamacha, the one that like yeah. has the weird eyes, and I'm like, yeah, I like yeah. this was very unique. I liked it. He was I he did. was I, creepy. I can't, he yes. was creepy, and I like this version of Gohan because Gohan was brave. Gohan saw what was happening. What? No. And he went to the da, 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 started attacking the henchmen. I said, "All right, Gohan." Tichi mm-hmm. lasted all but two minutes as she usually but, does. But, yeah, but, but she, she did, did something. You know? Mm-hmm. Right, and so now, um, it's just like you would think that Lord Slug would do everything in his power. To, hey, man, another Namek, two Namics t- together, but of course he wouldn't, right? He just blasted his henchmen, two of them, for not even for saying he was old. All right, oh, my man, you would not want anything to do with Mace, Darth Mace showed up. You feel me? <laughs> and you're old, man. You feel me? Oh, well, we're not supposed to respect you. Why? <laughs> you know what I'm saying so, like. After that, the hen- those henchmen died pretty bad. Like, your Meta Macha, his guts, he, he was coughing out blood, man. He was mm-hmm. dead. And then 
homeboy. <laughs> yeah, I got him. I'm like, yo, that's the oldest trick in the book. You going to dig underground in front of me? <laughs> and then go- <laughs> Goku gave him a mouthful, and he... he- <laughs> He, I don't know if you ever watched Judge Dredd with Kyle Urban, but yeah, that hot shot. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I was like, "Yo, this was a this was a terrible death." Mm-hmm. So now you go to the false Super Saiyan, and it just doesn't. It doesn't. Fit. I come out of nowhere. Oh no! This is more terrible than terrible. I'm like, yo, so you mean to tell me you didn't try to communicate with Goku even before that, or uh, do anything? Now you just show up. And I'm just, I'm like, this movie all over the place, and there's no thought behind it. If he's a super Namek, couldn't he have called the Dragon Balls? Why does he even... What is a super Namek? Great question, Tim. What is Keep a, going. <laughs> what is a super Namek? Because like, from what I see in this movie, you just got back some of your youth. And you just started fighting, and you just got big. I was like, bro, um, Piccolo did the same thing. And then my thing about it is, bro, like, like how can you go from such a compelling story like King Piccolo to this? It's like there's nothing here that sticks. There's nothing about this that just makes it, like, such a very satisfying piece and it's like bro yeah this is very skeptical it kind of feels like if this was like you know an actual series like bro this is like filler like oh nothing mm-hmm. really matters here mm-hmm. nothing matters like jory always says about certain things nothing made it past the first draft there was never a revision there was never like let's figure out how to make this tie together um if you want to kind of get into the little format that you have broken down i feel like villain wise like you said to him about the super namekian as I'm watching the movie, I'm like, you didn't even have to do much to make him different, right? If you told me being a Super Namekian means he has instant regeneration, right? Let's say Goku punches a hole through him, his body immediately heals, right? Or like he can gi- gigantify certain parts of his body, right? He doesn't have to go fully big. He can make his arms stretch out like he's Gear 3 Luffy. All of this is a lot more compelling than what I'm seeing right now in front of my screen. I'm not seeing anything that makes me feel like this guy is a problem. Nothing. The choreography was garbage. Garbage. He went out, he went out like Vilgax the first episode of Ben 10, man. So it was just like villain of the week. I'm like, this episode of Ben 10, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, bro, like someone really wrote in their storyboard. So yeah, yeah. So Piccolo rips off his ears while laughing like a maniac. Tells go on to whistle. <laughs> So he could give Goku the remaining of his key, and somehow <laughs> that'll get it done. That that will that will finish because he had super ears. Yeah, he had super ears, right? Nothing so like super damage, right? <laughs> Nothing says a uh, weakening in Dragon Ball's uh, villain like whistling, right? And, and again. I'm cool with like I'm cool with gimmicks, right? I think that's one of the things that we always kind of critique about Dragon Ball is like everything kind of becomes like power levels, and I'm glad that it didn't always boil down to that. But essentially, what you're telling me is that at any point if Gohan has started whistling, this movie would have ended 20 minutes ago, and that's my problem. Like that means nothing that Lord Slug did mattered. Mattered. Nothing mattered. Nothing. No, there was no way he was ever going to get it done because if they figured out his weakness it was a wrap so because and you know what it also would have been an interesting story to me like you remember i mean even though technically this arc was a horrible arc too remember in the granola arc when we met another namekian mm-hmm. and you found out that like a lot of them are refugees mm-hmm. um oh well some of them left the planet and then you know they live as refugees in other mm-hmm. places I feel like even that could have been an interesting story. Like, so what has this Namekian, who's obviously into crime, mm-hmm. what does he do around the galaxy? Because I get it. This was the era of Dragon Ball Z where they started to get more into, like, space villains. Yes. Okay, of course. You know, like, you know, Jory, you know, said it best, and you find out that exactly what is the truth. Turles was part of the Freeza Force, and he deviated. So, okay, in the midst of this universe, who is this Namekian... And, and it, it kind of sounds redundant, but space pirate. When you really yeah. look at it, invader, 
So, like, what is his what is his whole purpose, bro? Like, yes, you know, Namekians have a longer lifespan than most life forms, but it's just like, where is this going? Yeah. Why is he with these demons? Where did he meet them? Why do they have a spaceship? Why? What is, like you said, what have they been doing? If, if Slug is this old, what has he been doing for these, I'm I'll assuming, say, hundreds of years? I'll say this. He's probably the closest thing we'll ever get to knowing who and how garlic jr dad character was actually garlic jr dad would have been actually as a character this is probably the That's closest fair. thing this is exactly who i imagine him to be killing a minion within 30 seconds just because he called him old it, 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 it's, it's garbage bro it's garbage <laughs> it's, it's garbage, garbage. Yeah, and to be good. honest bro, i feel like there's nothing more we can really say about this particular movie i feel like we could just move on to well, the, go- oh, the yeah. golden boy you know, I gotta. I mean, I gotta hit our format. It's only fair, right? And you're talking mm-hmm. about somebody who hates this movie. Did you feel the way that the character, the heroes, are utilized in this movie made sense? No. When you see Goku going fake Super Saiyan, and no, no, <laughs> no. It was. It was just. It was redundant, man. Like, like I said, man. Um, even the villains' designs. Like, yes, you know, of course, they're taking a lot of stuff from like Frieza's like army inspiration, and they kind of try to fuse it with King Piccolo, because I see the mm-hmm. dragon wings and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I still feel like it would have made sense, especially on the scale, with, you know, with Piccolo's iteration. And even Goku, even Krillin. Like, imagine seeing villains that nearly almost obliterated you in the Dragon Ball saga. Like, you remember Tambourine killed Krillin? Mm-hmm. Tambourine killed Krillin. Um, King Piccolo killed Master Roshi and Chao Tzu. It's like, that would have been so interesting to see, like, yes, you know, they're not the same people, but there's, they have similar features. And, you know, you could have got, you know, you could have experimented with their names a bit like that. Because, um, yeah, you know, because with Piccolo, everything was out there, a uh, musical item. So Slug, like, what would you, what would you name your henchmen? Mm-hmm. Like, what would you, what, what would you name them that gives them kind of like a connection to you? And I felt like that would have been great, bro. It would have hit on the the, the, the the Dragon Ball nostalgia. You could have advanced more about the Namekian lore. Like maybe him as a super Namek, depending on which clan he was from, he knows different techniques. And, you know, that could have like opened up Piccolo's like curiosity. Like, wow, I could do so much more. Yeah. That I didn't know. But nope. You got... Uh, Color palette Super Saiyan that I hope Xenoverse don't get no ideas. Hey, bro. <laughs> With the way they're going, <laughs> crystal red stone sticking out your body, and now you're a different character. It's, it's crazy. It's not. It's, it's crazy. They might double and, back. <laughs> him and Tapion got the same clothing on, technically. Yeah. I mean, but this is from an era where there was a lot of, you know, let's call them inspired designs okay. amongst the, the, the movie properties. But All yeah, right. I mean, we we can pretty much move on. I just, I think, I mean, again, like I know we're gonna cover Bio Broly at some point. I just when I look at everyone's like, oh, Bio Broly, ah, that, 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 that. It's, it's unquestionably the worst movie. I'm like, listen, have you watched Lord Slug recently? This is a disaster movie. <laughs> this is something again. This is something where like he's saved by the fact that he's just not as bad as a concept. Even Spar- even even Sparkling Zero can save him in that boring moves that they they did a straight ten Kaichi three copy and paste. They didn't what else try. They were, they don't know there's nothing to pull from. <laughs> they didn't, he didn't they do didn't anything. Even, <laughs> they didn't even try, bro. I was like, let me guess. Oh, darkness I beam. Oh, darkness blast. Grow yeah. giant. Mm-hmm. Mouth I was like, blast. bro, you have the exact same move set from a PS2 game. Wow. He did nothing. He did nothing. So, yeah. This movie is a 1 out of 10 for me. I, I it's Like I said, it's it's the worst. It's the worst. I, I, I don't have nothing to say um, to redeem it. I like the, the fighting landscape, I'll say. The abandoned city thing was kind of cool. That was cool. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's always interesting and refreshing when Dragon Ball brings in new environments. I thought that was interesting, but... Other than that, I'm like, yeah, because the first three movies was movie. very hard left in terms because you had this demonic looking castle for the first one. Mm-hmm. The second one was some ice, uh, cyber dome. 
the third one. Oh, oh yeah, giant tree that's turning the world into tree. a wasteland. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I give it that. I'm like, out of especially because of the movies we're about to cover. I'm like, to be fair, um, it's it's a very unique setting compared to even the next movie we're going to talk about. So that's yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at on on Lord Slug. Uh,